1999, before the internet was the internet and there was no social media, how do you get attention for your brick and mortar business that you just started for 12 grand where you got every single thing that you've ever had in your entire life sunk into it? How do you get customers? That's a real fucking problem, okay? And this is why I get upset when people ask these kind of questions. You have apps in your phone that are free that expose you to people, okay? And you don't need 10,000 people. You need 10. And then you take those 10 and you provide them with the best fucking donut they've ever had, including the best experience they've had buying a donut they've ever had. And then those 10 people go out and tell their entire social media network about this new donut that they had from this seven-year-old girl who's amazing, who also nailed the customer experience and is actually doing something very cool. Now you're leveraging attention. So great product, great experience, free social media. That's the play. What is up, guys? It's Andy Purcell, and this is the show for the real and say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern reality. Was it modern society? All right. And welcome to mother freaking reality. <laughs> I'm not even doing it over. I don't give a shit. All right. Uh, all right. So we have Q&AF today. That's where uh, you submit the Qs and we bring you the AFs. You can submit your questions one of a couple different ways. The first way is... Guys, you can email those questions into askandy at andyforsella.com. Or you can go on YouTube on the Q&AF episodes and drop your question in the comments and we'll pick some from there as well. Other times we have CTI. CTI is cruise the internet. That's where we talk about what's going on in the world. Current events, news. Uh, we make some jokes. We speculate on what's true in the world, what's not true in the world, and then we talk about how we the people can be the solution to the problems going on. Other times we have real talk. Real talk is just five to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. Other times we have full length. That's where we bring a guest in. We just have a conversation like you see on most other podcasts. And other times we have 75 hard verses, and that's where we bring people in who have completed the 75 hard portion of the Live Hard program, which is the best mental toughness calibration program on the planet. It's legendary. You've heard of it. Um, and the reason you've heard of it is because it changes people's lives. You can get that program for free at episode 208 on the audio feed. You can go to 75hard.com or you can buy the book on my website, 75 Hard, not required. But if you're somebody who wants to know the ins and outs at a deep level, that's where you should go. Uh, we have this thing called the fee. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a fairly successful entrepreneur. I've built a few companies. I'm done okay in my life and I've done it uh, without the traditional help that most people have. I didn't have investors. I didn't have rich parents. I didn't have people to give me money. I didn't have people to, you know, do it for me. Uh, we did it from scratch. And I share those lessons with you guys for free here on this show. And I only ask one simple thing. I don't ask you, I don't pitch you. I don't do all this stuff. I ask you one simple thing and it's this. If you get value from the show, please share the show, all right? I get censored everywhere I go because I do not hold back. I think you guys know that. And so I need you guys to share the show for the message to be heard. So that's what I ask. When I say pay the fee, that's what that means. So if the show makes you laugh, if it makes you think, if it gives you a new perspective, if it helps you out, it gives you some nuggets that are gonna help you in life and business, um, please share it. That's, that's how we operate here. So anyway... What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going? Good. Yeah, it's a good Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Coming back off a good weekend. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How you doing? Good, man. I always like to just check in with you. Yeah. You know, because there's some some days like we don't even like I might barely get like 10 minutes with you because yeah. you're, you know, yeah. Doing entrepreneur shit, you know. So just, how you doing, man? How are you? Yeah, good. I'm sore. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sore. I can't figure out what's going on with my body. And I think it's just called getting old. Mm. You know, I'm like sore all the time. I smell it. Yeah, really? The mothballs? Mothballs. are coming through? I've been getting a hit, but like your dad- I believe it. Your dad walked by at the same time, so I didn't know- it, Who's okay. who? Where the f***, where yeah. they come from? That makes sense. But- uh, I can feel it, man. Yeah. I can feel the mothballs starting to form inside <laughs> me, bro. Like, I can hear them too. Like my knees make noises, my body makes noises, yeah. like shit don't feel right. Yeah. How do you combat that? You don't. Mm. You just wear it. You just go I with saw it. this question on a Q, uh, somebody's Q&A button on- Instagram and the question was, I'm in my mid forties and I'm sore as f and I just <laughs> fucking laughed. I'm like, Yeah. 
<laughs> There's no fix. That's how it goes. Yeah, no hack to that. Yeah. yeah. And like, dude, everybody said that stuff when I was younger. They were like, wait till you get to be 30. It didn't really bother me. Like in my mm-hmm. 30s, I was fine. Wait till you get to be 40. That didn't really bother me either uh, until I had that injury, right? Yeah. And now that I'm like healthy and I'm training again, I'm training probably as hard as I've ever trained or close to it. Um, it's taking its toll. But the reality is, is I'd rather feel sore than feel like a lazy, you know, plebe of a person. Yeah. So it that's is what fact. it is. Yeah. 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 No, that's a win there, man. That's a win. Well, uh, I got some good ones for you. All right. Let's get to it. Let's knock these out. Guys, Andy, question number one. And by the way, yeah, I don't need advice on what to do to not be sore. Oh, it's coming. I know. Oh, it's coming. Like, I don't hey, need- Andy, like, have you tried anal yes. butt lube? Look, bro, I've done all the anal butt lubes. <laughs> all right, I've done all the- I've done the enemas. I've done all the- <laughs> All the weird shit. I've done it all. Just assume that. All right? <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing. You know, I've, I've built some things around that knowledge. There is one thing that does work that I actually got you on. Yeah, the- uh, uh, Chinese bear piss. Yeah, no, it was- What's Tiger that shit bomb. called? Tiger bomb. The Chinese tiger? Yeah. China, yeah, tiger bomb. That shit is awesome. It's great. That's like an ancient- That shit is magic. It's an ancient black secret. Yeah, I don't I do not do ads on the show, and they're not giving me anything, but I'm going to tell you this. That, that shit, shit really works. Works. Like, when I first started uh, working <laughs> well, with DJ- That shit cures COVID. I, dude, <laughs> DJ throws me a bottle of this- sh- I was sore, and he throws me a bottle of this shit. He's like, here, put some of this on. It's like this little bottle, mm-hmm. like this big. So put some of that on you. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I've never seen this before in my life. <laughs> He's like, just put it on there. And I'm like, fine. I put it on there, dude. I felt better. Yeah. Like, it made me feel better, like, with, like <laughs> considerably better. It's good shit. Yeah. Whatever's in that, like, yeah, I, I don't it's only know. a matter of time before they make it illegal. Yeah, Because it actually works. Oh, it'll be black market for sure. Yeah. Especially after this episode. Have you never tried that Tiger Bomb, dude? That's what it's called, good right? Shit, yeah. That stuff is great. I think you can get it at, like, CVS, Walgreens, yeah. you know? It's a little bitty jar, dude. It's expensive. You don't need much. No. Well, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, one, that little bitty jar last year. Last year, oh, there it is. Bro, that stuff, yep. that's the real deal stuff right there, man. Chinese bear piss. Pain relieving ointment. That really works. It's like been gay. Let, but less gay. But without the gay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's, been, it's like been straight. <laughs> <laughs> what? But guys, yeah, let's get into this. That man. was like, th- 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 see, guys. No, that was good. No, see, no, see, that's what people look like when they laugh because you pay them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a show, <laughs> guys. Let's get into this, man. Andy, guys, question number one. Andy, uh, you often talk about keeping a record of what people said uh, said about you uh, coming up on your journey of success. Um, and you've always said that that was a, a source of motivation. Mm-hmm. How exactly do you use that fuel uh, in the right ways? Yeah, look, man, uh, anytime you set out to do anything great, you're going to have people that are going to talk shit. All right. When you operate outside the realm of what's normal or considered normal by your friends, your family, your neighbors, your peer group that you grew up around, you're going to learn real fast that people don't like it, Yeah. all right? And they're going to judge you. They're going to discourage you. They're going to put doubts in your mind. It's usually passive-aggressive doubts, sound stuff like this. Are you Are you sure you're going to do that? How are you going to do that? Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you, you want to do that? Oh, you better get started now because, you know, nobody ever makes it in that. These are things that people will say, right? And then the next, the next thing that will happen is, you know, you'll be in it, and they'll be calling you, you know, after a year or two, and they'll call you and be like, hey, you okay? What's going on? You know, and they'll act like they're real concerned. But what they're actually trying to do is they're trying to dig out what's really going on um, because they want to hear your pain. They want to hear your frustration. They want to hear that you're struggling and that you want to quit and that you made a mistake because they want to affirm their position of never trying. All right. Validate so, their excuses. Correct. Yeah. They they want to they want to validate themselves to say, okay, see, I made the right decision by not trying to do what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So then what will happen is you'll start to get some success and you'll you'll get a new car or your business will grow. You'll you'll it'll be clear that you're getting some sort of success and they'll stop talking to you. All right. And they'll stop talking to you. Um and when you see them, they'll say passively insulting stuff like for me what they would always say is you know and this is when i'm i have you know a dozen stores and uh, uh, other companies that are you know producing good amounts of revenue and they say things like oh man you, you know you still you still got that little vitamin shop so they'll try to minimize and all of these things are fuel 
Mm-hmm. Okay? And so all of these little remarks, all of these little snide comments, all of these little slights and uh, shade that people throw on you, these are fuel if you look at it properly. Champions look at these negative remarks as fuel to push them down the field. They understand how to take and bank every single negative thing that is said about them with a smile on their face. And then instead of getting mad and like commenting back or getting in an argument or draining their energy, arguing with this person or debating with this person, they just take all of it and collect it up. And then when they don't feel like doing what they know they're supposed to do, they think about those things and they think like, yeah, I don't really feel like doing this today, man. Like this, I'm sore, I'm tired, I'm, I'm, I'm burnt out. But that motherfucker said I wasn't going to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's where you pull this negative energy from. So how you actually do this is that you take the negative energy and when you start to feel lazy or undisciplined, which happens to everybody, no matter how disciplined you are, you you remember all these negative things that people said to you about how you're never going to make it, how you're never going to do this, how you're never going to be what it is you say you're going to be. And then you, you think about those things for a second and then you get up and you go do whatever it is you're supposed to do, knowing that if you stay where you are and you actually give in to that moment of laziness or that lapse in discipline, that you're actually proving them right. Okay, so the question is basically, how do you do that? That's how you do it. People talk shit. You collect all the shit talking. You put it up on your shoulder as a big chip when you need it because you don't feel like you uh, have what it takes to get done what needs to be done today. You think about what they said and you go do it. And that's how you use it in a, in a healthy way. You know, people try to say, oh, that's not a healthy way. You should only be motivated by the people who believe in you. Well, if you're only motivated by the people who believe in you, you're not going to be very motivated because most people don't have anybody that believes in them. Mm. That's the whole point. At least point. in the beginning. Right. Yeah. And when you talk about this idea with people about how, you know, you should prove people uh, the, the believers right instead of proving motherfuckers wrong. Well, you're limiting your fuel source because in the beginning you don't have anybody that believes in you because you've never done anything, which is a perfectly logical position for them to hold. You've never done the thing. All right. You've never even indicated that you can do the thing and you feel entitled to everybody around you to their belief and your ability to do the thing. That's an illogical way of thinking about it. And if you look at the fuel as just the people who believe in you when you first say what it is you're going to do, you're not going to have any fucking fuel. So you have to use the negative fuel. You have to shove it down people's throats. You have to remember all the shit that people said because that's what's going to drive you down the field where other people who are doing it just to prove people right are going to be people who never get anywhere because nobody believes in them in the first place. So we have to really understand that Operating from the dark side, operating from the negative energy is a very productive way to operate. And if you look at any of the greats of all time at what they did, Tom Brady, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, you know, exceptional business people, etc. These people, when you get them alone and you talk to them, they're not talking about the motherfuckers that believed in them. They're talking about the people who talk shit. They're talking about the people who, you know, made snide comments and then smiled in their face. I just saw a post about this from Deion Sanders yesterday where Deion was like, you know, people say the most ridiculous, asinine, hurtful things to me. And I just smile in their face and they they, they think I don't know. And I, I know everything and I never forget. And that's how champions have in their mind. Like I might smile in your face, bro, but don't think I don't know what the fuck you thought or what you said. I fucking know it. Okay, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to continue to win. And every time I win big, I'm going to smile in your face and shake your hand when you say you're proud of me. And then I'm going to walk five steps down the way and be like, I showed that motherfucker fuck him. And that's how it works, bro. Like it's reality. And people don't like that. They think it's mean. It's not mean. Those people were mean to you when you were starting. But in fact, they actually gave you a massive gift if you know how to productively use the dark side energy. So it's not a bad thing. Don't let these spiritual gurus on the internet try to convince you that this is a bad way to fucking live because reality is, is that in the beginning, especially, you need it. Now, as you progress down the path and as you get some success and as you prove to all these people that you're not just this regular plebe of a human being like they are, 
you're actually doing things, your motivation and drive will change and it will become purpose motivated. Because dude, if you just operate on that dark side energy forever, what will happen is, is you'll run out of it because eventually you'll become so successful that people don't really doubt you anymore. And when people stop doubting you, it's no different than whenever you were in the beginning and you were looking for people who believed in you, yeah. okay? So when you win big, people stop doubting you and they start saying, well, fuck yeah, he wins at everything he does. And if you operate exclusively on dark side energy, where are you gonna get your energy from? Hmm. You understand? Yeah. So it's a different game. So then what happens is, is you start to open up and look for the purpose. What is my mission? What is my purpose? And as I've evolved, my mission and purpose has become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It started with my realization that it wasn't just about me. It was also about the results that I produced for the customers. Then it became the life-changing results that I produced for the customers, along with the responsibility of the careers of the people who were in my company. Then it became, we can use this entire culture that we're creating with people who were changing their lives and at a, from a customer standpoint, and we're changing these people's lives from an employee standpoint, and we can build a culture that actually changes the entire fucking landscape of business. And then it becomes, we can not just change the landscape of business, we can change the landscape of culture as a whole. You see? So the vision keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but in the beginning, all you got is people that don't believe in you. So it's perfectly okay to use that energy. In fact, if you don't use it, I think you're gonna get your ass beat. So that's real, man. I want to ask you this too on the follow up. Have you had people in your life that flipped? And what I mean by that is like in the beginning, they actually did believe in you, maybe genuinely. But then once you start making the success, they're flipped to, to being envious, maybe or jealous. Like, I mean, what, what's your take on that? Well, first of all, no, because those people, they never flipped because they were pretending in the beginning. So you're saying it wasn't even real? No, yeah, they're, mm. they're it's fake belief, it's fake love, mm. okay? It's it's fake support, and they're hoping that you fail, and then they can be there and be like, man, you tried, and it's all good, and you guys could continue to waste your life away mm -hmm. at some bar on a Wednesday afternoon, if can you know two o'clock, right? Yeah. Like that's that's the mentality of of how these these people from the old neighborhood are going to treat you when you go out. So there's not like a whole lot of people that truly believe in you, right? You might have a couple, you might have a parent or you might have a brother or you might have, you know, somebody that's close to you that like is willing, but people will show you how they believe in you by how they help you win. Mm -hmm. People that actually believe in you will help you win. People who don't believe in you will say, oh, I believe in you. And then they're gone, yeah. right? And then they'll show back up whenever you have the good times happening, right? You have the money, you have the, the, the exciting events. The you, vacations. You built something, yeah, yeah. right? And they'll come out of the woodwork. But the reality is, dude, is, um, you know, people have a hard time being happy for success. And the unfortunate reality is, is that once you get to a certain level of success, it does change your friendship dynamics with most people because the reality of like a, a very high level life is that when you when you talk about it, like if we were all out to dinner and I was around a bunch of people that just had like normal jobs, right? And I'm talking about what I do, that perception to them is that I'm bragging, right? Right? Where well, I'm, it's uncomprehendable. Well, dude, but the perception is yeah. I'm bragging when in fact, I'm just talking about the reality of my life. Right. When, when people, when people say that thing, you, you've changed, they don't understand that they're actually giving you a compliment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the point. The point is to change. The point is to evolve. The point is to get better. And when people, when you're, when you keep surrounding yourself with people who have refused to go on that journey, they're going to hate you for just going on it. So, you know, the reality of business, and this is why I talk about the relationships changing over the course of time, because your friends today, if you continue to go up that path of achievement and drive and success, those people will not be your friends in five years. Hmm. You'll have a new set of friends. And there will be a set of friends who are aligned with what it is you're trying to do then. And then in five more years, if you keep going, some of them will fall off, some will go with you. But the the idea that, you know, it's lonely at the top is not a true idea. It's 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 a that's a loser's perspective of what success looks like. All right. It's said by people who have never been successful. It's not lonely at the top, it's lonely in the middle. It's lonely when you're moving from your first friend group to the second friend group who's also driven like you. And then from the second friend group who's also driven like you to the third who's taking everything to the next level and be and, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah, so these gaps that yeah. These gaps in the middle, I call them no man's land. 
Like a lot of, you spend a lot of time in no man's land and it's lonely when you're there. But the reality is, is the friendships that you build by continuing to pursue your own true potential and become better and better and better and better are better and better and better and better. They're just less in numbers. Like I have less people that I talk to, but the relationships that I have are much more valuable. If that makes sense. Absolutely, man. I love it. All right, guys, Andy, question number two. Andy. Uh, hey, Andy, my seven-year-old daughter was reading one of your Otis and Charlie books, The F uh, Fantastic Fruit Stand, uh, and she said, I want to do that. Uh, she wants to open up a bakery business, so uh, we bought her the equipment for a mini donut business. We perfected recipes. I sat down with her and broke down her P&L, and she understands the economics. Uh, she's pumped and ready to go. The question is, how would you or do you maximize the exposure for her mini donut business in a local market? How do you maximize exposure for, for a, a brand new starting business? Well, I mean, we're so conditioned to this that people like, do you understand how valuable the tool is that you have in your pocket right now? Hmm. Do you understand that you can reach people for literally free without having to go anywhere? Like, do you guys forget this? Like, do you, do you forget this exists? You guys don't remember because a lot of you aren't old enough to remember what it was like before that, okay? Here's a real question. In 1999, before the internet was the internet and there was no social media, how do you get attention for your brick and mortar business that you just started for 12 grand where you got every single thing that you've ever had in your entire life sunk into it? How do you get customers? That's a real fucking problem, okay? That's, real, that's a real thing to think about. Okay, and this is why I get upset when people ask these kind of questions. You have apps in your phone that are free that expose you to people, period. Okay, and you don't need 10,000 people. You need 10, all right? And then you take those 10 and you provide them with the best fucking donut they've ever had, including the best experience they've had buying a donut they've ever had. And then those 10 people go out and tell their entire social media network, about this new donut that they had from this seven-year-old girl who's amazing, who also nailed the customer experience and is actually doing something very cool, okay? Now you're leveraging attention, all right? So great product, great experience, free social media. That's the play. You should, be, you should consider yourself extremely lucky to live in this day and age yeah. when it comes to entrepreneurship because of the free attention that you're able to leverage. That was not an option for me when I started my company. That was not an option for any of these companies that you see out here on the street as you drive up and down that were started pre-year 2000. That's, dude, think about it. You can't afford newspaper. There's only newspaper, print, and radio, television. How, how can you afford that when you've sunk your $12,000, your only $12,000 into a retail startup? You can't. No shit. So you know what I had to do? I had to go door to door and I had to knock on doors, thousands of them for years and say, hey, I'm Andy. I'm down the street. We got this thing, something with Superstores. If you guys are into working out or you're into, you know, you need to get in shape or whatever, dude, come see us. Here's a couple free things, a t-shirt, shaker cup, a free bar or whatever I could do, Right. That's how we did it. So you can also implement that. I would implement that. I would get a little donut cart and I'd go door to door to these people and make them aware of you. I would do everything that you could possibly do because business, contrary to what the internet presents it to be, is very competitive and very difficult and very hard for anybody. Mm -hmm. So you have the free, the free internet. You have the ability to leverage your own customers, word of mouth by doing an excellent job. And you have the ability to put one foot in front of the other and go actually see people if you want to do it. I mean, I was going to ask you that as a follow up. Like, do you think, I mean, especially in this day and age, because listen, we we know for a fact there's a lot of kids, a lot of young people out there who are socially awkward, right? So, like, what would be the point of pouring all the gas on social media if you don't have those social interpersonal skills, communication skills, right? Well, so that's we, why you should do both. That's because what I'm saying. you're like, going to learn. You you'll that? learn yeah. the personal skills through right. the reps, right? You know, this is why I recommend young people, you know, who want to become successful. And they always, they always turn their nose up at this when I say it. But, dude, you should go get a retail environment job in a high-traffic establishment for the reps alone. Yeah. The ability to talk to many, many people on a daily basis is a massive driver of your skill set that most people will never get. 
The reason I can do what I do is because for years and years and years and years, I talked to dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people every single day. Yeah. All right. And then I was intentional about it. I was coaching myself. I was breaking down the interactions. I was thinking about how could I say this or how could I do this or what could I do better? Right. So when you actually become intentional about improving your people skills, most people can't compete with that. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's still people. You can use all the technology you want, but at the end of the day, there is going to come a time where you're going to have to actually connect with real people. And if you can't do that, you're at a massive disadvantage to the people who can. And the people who can are becoming less and less and less and less, which makes it a massive opportunity to go out and intentionally create the skill set. Yeah, I love that, man. So, so build, build a great product. Build a great buying experience. Yes. Build those interpersonal uh, communication yes. skills and go get it. Yes. Love yeah. It. And you've never been able to do this for less money or, or less effort in the history of earth. So, you know, like I don't have sympathy for people who come to me and they're like, I don't, I don't know how to get traffic to my business. Well, motherfucker, you got two feet, right? You see those doors over there? Go fucking knock on them. Mm -hmm. You know, at the bare minimum, do that. Yeah. See, and this is why I talk about zero options mentality, because that's scary, right? Right. But in the beginning of my that's business- an option. Be, no, there was no other option for yeah. me. Dude, do you know how terrified I was to go knock on fucking doors, bro? That's terrifying. But yeah. I didn't have an option. And I knew that if I didn't do it, guess what? I'm going out of business. Okay? So learn to cultivate that mentality. Like, it's all or nothing, bro. I still come to work- after 25 years, I'll be 25 years in this game on January 1st, okay? After 25 years, I still come to work convinced that if I don't give my best, we are going out of business. And that that is an absurd thought to people. Like, people laugh at it. Yeah. They see my life. They see the companies we've built. They see all the shit going on that we're working on. I come here every day, like, convinced. I might like, And I know it's not, like, when I stop... I almost have to stop and think about it sometimes that it's not true. That's how much I've convinced myself that it's true. And that's important because, dude, if you, the minute you get lazy, the minute you get uh, the lack of urgency, the minute that you let off the gas, bro, there's a whole bunch of hungry people behind you doing the same thing. They're going to beat you. Mm -hmm. So like, And that's real. Yeah. So, like, dude, cultivating <laughs> yeah. this zero options mentality, I must do this or else I will lose everything is a massive driver for the entrepreneur. Now, if you go talk to the online, you know, spiritual gurus, they'll say, well, that's a very unhealthy way to live. Well, yeah, so is being broke. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's real. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's real shit. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a fallback plan. I got to come here every day and give it my all. That's it. And I've done that every single fucking day for 25 years. And when you look around at my life and you wonder why I got it, that's why. Yeah. And you'll have it too, bro. And the best part about it is you have access to this technology that we're talking about. So that 25 years for me could be 10 for you. That's how you should be thinking about it. Love it, man. Guys, Andy, our third and final question. Andy, question number three. Uh, this question is about self-doubt. Okay. Andy, how do you get through the days of self-doubt? The days you truly feel like you hate yourself, you're not capable how do you get yourself past those days of self doubt? If you have them, I it's, that's discipline. Hmm. That that's operating from a place where you are going to get whatever it is that's needed to be done done, regardless of how you feel. Do you know how many days I execute at a perfect, like a perfect level where I feel like total dog shit? A lot of them. Yeah. Do you know how many days I over twenty five years, bro? that I've executed at a literal perfect level over the course of a day where I felt like quitting that day or how many days I've, 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 I've executed at a perfect level where I thought I was shit or thought that I was a fraud or had imposter syndrome or felt like I didn't, I wasn't qualified to do those things. It's not about how you feel. It's about how you execute. And that's why discipline is so important. If you can cultivate yourself into someone who will execute regardless of the doubt feelings, regardless of the frustration, regardless of the pain, regardless of what anybody says, regardless of how you feel, you're going to win. It's it's math. Like you cannot outmath the math of that. Like it's <laughs> you if you win today and you win tomorrow and you win the next day regardless of how you feel and you win the next day after that and the next day after that and you keep that streak going, it is impossible to lose. It is impossible to lose. Okay. And we get caught up in these feelings 
and our, our feelings all the time. Your feelings, and, and like, dude, I understand. It's a real thing. I'm not saying I don't have them. I'm not saying I don't wake up some days and think, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. In fact, most of the days I wake up and I'm like, Fuck, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm willing to go do what I need to do. And I do it regardless of what I'm, my dialogue is or anything. And that comes down to discipline, dude. And that comes down to just executing regardless of how you feel. And it's, it's very simple concept. It's yeah. not, it's not hard to understand. We have too much, you guys are inundated with too much bullshit on the internet. Okay. There's too much focus on your feelings. Now, outside of the entrepreneurship spectrum, I don't, I'm not speaking. I'm talking about the people in that are listening to this right now that want to win and want to build something great. Your feelings are legitimately irrelevant. It's about how you execute. So if you can, and if you can execute when other people can't, think of the advantage that that has for you. All right, think of all these people out here that are asking questions just like that. And on the days that they feel like that, where they have self doubt, they have anxiety, they have frustration, they're saying, "Well, I'm just going to give myself a break. I'm just going to, I'm going to take the day off, or I'm going to take, you know, four days off because I need to recharge and I need to recompress." Like, dude, this, that is, those are the little gaps that you gain on those people. Those are the little gaps that put you miles and miles and miles and miles ahead. Is it fun all the time? No. Does it make you feel good all the time? No. But the end result sure feels fucking good. Yeah. It feels good when I wake up every day and I look around at what I built and said, Fuck. you know, I could have quit all those times, but I didn't. That feels good, right? People don't think about that. They yeah. think about their feelings, bro. And our society is so focused on feelings that we forget that feelings are actually irrelevant to the results that we produce if we're disciplined about execution. Yeah. So, you know, what do I do on those days when I don't feel like doing it? I do it. It's that simple, man. What do I do on the days where I'm filled with self-doubt? I do it. What, are those day what do I do on those days where I feel sick? I do it. I just do it. Like it's that simple, dude. And I do it regardless of how I feel. Now, if you're asking how to deal with those feelings and how to solve those feelings and all this shit, I don't know. Here's what I do know. The more discipline that you are and the more execution that you do in spite of how you feel, the more confident you become, the less those feelings are, are re represented inside yourself. Yeah. I very rarely have those kind of feelings anymore because I'm very confident in my ability to wake up and handle my motherfucking shit every single day. I feel like sometimes even like just getting those things done, what you know needs to get done, sometimes that's all you need to pull you out of those moments. Bro, no one talks about that. No one talks about how anxiety is actually just a indicator to remind you of the shit that you're putting off that needs to be done. Right. Right? Oh, wow, bro. And that's, then, that's massive right I, there. No. And then what they do is instead of doing, instead of just like seeing anxiety for what it is, which is a trigger for you to do things that are on your mind that you know need to be done, instead of doing that, then they take a break, right? Like that fixes it. Hold okay. on. <laughs> then they take a break and the break creates more anxiety because you're creating more distance between you and what you know is supposed to be done. All right? So you should be looking at these feelings as an indicator that something is off. And it's not that you're overwhelmed. It's that you're not executing on what the fuck you're supposed to be executing on. If you were actually getting up every day and you were eating the right food and you were training and you were executing your list against what it is you're trying to become in life, whether it's an entrepreneur, a musician, an athlete, whatever, okay? And you were doing that every single day, you might wake up with some anxiety and some frustration, but you know what's going to happen? There's going to be a conversation that clicks in your brain and be like, bro, I did my shit yesterday. Mm -hmm. I did it the day before that. I did it the day before that. I did it the day before that. I'm the fucking man. No one's doing that. And that conversation quickly shifts from, you know, this, this uncertain anxiety to very, very strong, confident feelings because you're like, no, I've handled my shit every single day. It's like when I get in my cold plunge every day, okay? Mm -hmm. I, every single day I do my cold plunge for eight minutes. I do it at 34, 35 degrees, which is very, very cold if you're not a cold plunger, okay? I do it for eight minutes and it's taken me a while to acclimate and get to that level. But unlike when you're doing it at 45 degrees, you don't ever get used to it at that temperature, bro. It sucks every single time, okay? <laughs> I, I, I walk up to that cold plunge every day and I look at it, and you know what I think? Fuck. That's what I think. You know what my second thought is? Bro, you're a bitch. You do this every fucking day. Get the fuck in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I do? I get the fuck in there. And then you know what I do? I get out. And I'm like, yeah, 
That's right. I did that. Yeah, f that cold plunge, right? Mm -hmm. Like I make an enemy out of it. And every day I look at it, like, dude, the days I don't want, like I had a day, uh, <laughs> I'm fucking, I got something wrong with me, but I had a day, <laughs> I had a day like last week, <laughs> this really fucked me too, where I missed my cold plunge in the morning. I didn't get home until like eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I did it, I, and, I and, and bro, I put it off and I put it off and I put it off, okay? And I was looking at the cold plunge and I got it and I'm like, you know, fuck it, I'm doing it, right? And I get in and I get, I get in. And that, while I'm halfway through it, I'm like, bro, you're doing extra. Mm. You're doing extra because you almost bitched out. You're doing fucking extra. And so instead of doing eight minutes, I did 10 minutes, right? Thinking, And it was eight o'clock at night. Well, if you do cold plunge like that, you know it takes like four or five hours for you to warm back up. And I was like, all right, I'll get in the hot tub, right? Well, I didn't know that the breaker had gone off that day. Oh. The hot tub was normal, like regular water, bro. <laughs> and I got in it and I'm like, I'm I didn't sleep the whole night. Like, but the point is, is like I punish myself mm. for having the weak thoughts. Like if I start to have weak thoughts, then I do extra. Yeah. Right. Like if I'm if I'm like, bro, I don't want to do this. You know what my you know what I do mentally? I'm like, no, f you. Not only are we doing that, we're doing extra. And that extra is what builds the confidence for me to overcome these feelings of doubt, insecurity, imposter syndrome. That shit never goes away. Anybody out here who's telling you that they never have those feelings, they're full of shit, okay? Like, you guys assume that because someone is successful, they've somehow overcome those feelings. That has nothing to do with it. What has to do with it is they've learned to operate in spite of those feelings. They've learned to operate and execute with those feelings. You see? Yeah. That's, that's what you guys are looking to try and solve the wrong puzzle. You're trying to solve it and remove the feelings, and then you'll execute. When in reality, if you execute in spite of having those feelings, you actually feel like a bigger winner because you have a better challenge to overcome. Does that make sense? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You, you can't eliminate it. And I think it's about everything's just, a test. Yeah. It's a fucking test. Well, just getting to a point in your life where it's like you understand that this is like this is an expectation. This is expected of this journey I'm trying to go on. No, dude, it's the wrong perspective. Well, yes, what you're saying is right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is. People have the wrong perspective because of the garbage that's spewed out by people who have never achieved anything on the fucking internet. Yeah. Okay? They think they're supposed to eliminate all these feelings and then go. Yeah. Well, you cannot eliminate these feelings. So if, you can, if, you're, if your logic is, I have to eliminate all these feelings and then go, and you cannot eliminate those feelings, when are you going to go? What's the answer? Never. Never. And that's why most people never go. So we have to understand that's not how it works. It doesn't work like clearing my chakras and my energy and all of a sudden I've got everything where I feel great and then I'm going to go do the thing. That's not how it works. You have to do the thing in spite of those feelings and then do the thing again and again and again and again and again until you understand those feelings are actually irrelevant and then you could build your confidence extra by when those feelings do happen, you actually do a little bit extra. So you actually perform better on the days where you feel like shit than the days you feel good. That's how you do it, man. That's how every winner in the world operates. Like you guys, you guys, you guys have to start pre-qualifying the advice that you're getting from knuckleheads on the internet because most of these people haven't built a motherfucking thing. They do not know what it what it means to win or what it takes to win. They have a microphone and a voice and a platform and some followers with no real evidence to support what they're talking about. If you if you take information from those people, you're gonna get the wrong picture. And I'm just telling you. I've been, I've interviewed the highest achieving people in the world. We've had fucking Joe Montana, Peyton Manning, and Arte Syndicate, like dude, champions, like champions of real shit. I mean, dude, James the Iron Cowboy, all of these guys, they don't wake up in the day and say, oh, I got to make myself feel good first. Goggins doesn't wake up in the day and say, man, I got to get happy before I go fucking run. No, he says, fuck that shit. I'm going to go fucking run. I'm going to get it done. And by the way, because I feel like shit, I'm doing five more miles. That's what champions do, bro. And you guys are trying to you guys are trying to become champions following the playbook of people who have never won anything. And that's not going to work for you. No. So you could disagree with what I'm saying or you could think I'm wrong, but I'm just telling you that's the way it is. It's not fun. It's not pleasant. But uh, when you get through it, you start to develop a sense of worth that is unfuckable. And you get to a point where you look around and you're like, yeah, it's worth it. It's real shit, man. I love it. Guys, Andy, that was three, man. Yeah, guys. Don't be a hoe. Share the show.